but I still need to clarify this point because individuals have asked me and it's hard for me to ask is that under the charter it stipulates that if this were to make it to a ballot in December uh, the charter states that a majority of the uh, electors in the city of Lafayette and a majority of the electors in the parish of Lafayette no how's your saying no it's it's under 703 C And that would be, you see, what, what you're doing is you're looking at eight, you're looking at a transitional provision back in, in Article 8 that was necessary to be able to even determine whether or not the consolidation occurred. But once the consolidation occurred and the, this charter becomes effective, you then look into the body of the charter itself and under 703 C it deals with how you amend or repeal the charter and that is that is submitted to the qualified electors of the city parish government which is the the entire parish okay and to clarify this for those for the public sure which means you would have the people in Lafayette voting on this number one there in the parish so they would have one vote Correct. It would be in the last sentence of 703C says yep. the results shall be determined by a majority vote of the electors voting on any particular proposal. And the electors they're referring to are the electors of the city parish government, which is everyone in the parish. So one vote, one, one count. Every individual's. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what, that's uh, all I have for now. Sorry, Mr. Robinson, and um, I'll talk more in the future, but thank you, Mr. Escott. Okay, sure. That's all I have for now, Mr. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Councilman Billard. Yes. Um, Senator, uh, can you get uh, Mayor Robodo hot? Okay. And you hot, sir. First time for everything. Turning red. I see you. <laughs> and, and Paul? If you can, I, what I want to do is I want to go back to William's uh, original thing on 3-09, number 6. And I guess the only suggestion that I would like to make, and I'll probably make the amendment, but I want to talk it out with you first, it is just a, a recommendation as, as a checks and balance, since you do have the final say-so on the contracts. But the way it's currently written is... You could get two, the council city one, council parish one, and you have a public works director and utilities director. Well, you're the boss of those two. So you actually have what I would call a super majority on the professional services committee. If I'm not, that's the way I'm looking at it. What I would like to do, an abundance of caution, even though the point has been proven that no matter what, you can kind of do what you want like you talked about earlier, to have it scaled one towards the uh, the council members to where if it ever would come up to oh well why isn't whoever will be the mayor president why does he go against the the people enough times where there'd be some type of checks and balances how could we accomplish that or maybe i'm overshooting comment suggestions as i read it um the amended version that that is currently uh, before us uh, does give me three an appointment uh, the LUS and the public works director and then gives each of the councils one if if I remember what I read correctly uh, I think that's the five makeup which kind of flips it from where it is now which is three to the council and and two to the mayor president uh, it it doesn't matter to me I you know the only way I could see expanding it is giving um, two to each of the councils to give them four and keep the mayor president's office at the three and then it would be four of the seven uh, would be you know the two councils that make it up um, but then I go back to I've got two parish councils uh, members voting on LUS contracts, which doesn't make any sense to me, but um, but so Again, I, I don't know if there's a perfect solution unless you have a city professional services and a parish professional services 
and a consolidated professional services because there's situations where contracts will be either city or parish or consolidated, which would require three. But like I said, since I can ignore, um, it, you know, if right. you want to keep, I guess it, if you want to keep the council in control or at least it's having a majority recommendation, then you could go to the seven and give each of the councils two and keep the mayor president at one. Um, but I, I don't think it really matters because I don't always listen to my directors either. So uh, as they can attest, so, um, you know, we'll, uh, but Mr. Boudreau, he would whichever, to whichever way y'all want, well, I'm, I'm just I'm letting just you saying, know I'm okay with a, it. Uh, it'd be a good checks and balances because if you would always go against the grain, you'd, no one ever, no one can say it's not because of you. It's because of the, the, the council members where if it's flipped and you're doing exact opposite, they're going to say, well, well, yeah, but you're the boss of those two other appointees. The council only has one each. On that, I, I just the more we talked about it. Go ahead, Mr. Boudreau, what you were suggesting to me earlier. I was just wanting to make you aware of right now with a single body of nine people, you have three council members. When you go to the two separate bodies of five, you're going to have one coming from the five from a percentile perspective. Um, I, I, I see what you was trying to accomplish as well as Mr. Terrio and Mr. Castillo. And then the mayor president makes a good point. I don't think that you're going to be able to get a, a perfect uh, scenario, you know, if you go to seven, you got the, the LUS, the fiber issues. If you stay at five, you have who's going to have the power. And then if you try to get three members of five from a council, which, which one of the councils get two and which one gets one. For me, the, the comfort that I have with this is that we, we often talk about the professionals in the field. Um, the public works director, the utilities director, although they are an appointment of the mayor president, they are bounded by some ethical rules. They are bounded by some some um, licensing rules because they have an engineering license. Where I, you know, th there has to be some degree of trust, you know. And unfortunately, a lot of that has been lost. But I look at those two individuals not so much an appointment of of the mayor president. They are the professionals in the field who work closely with all of these engineering firms, architectural firms, and other type of design groups. This third appointment, I don't know if we want to maybe mandate that it be something else that the mayor president appoints, but you know, you got the planning and zoning director that's eligible, or you, you might have a, a, a um, mid-level or lower level employee, maybe that might be the area to put a stipulation where the influence may not be as great, but at the end of the day with the two separate bodies, I think it's gonna be hard to get beyond one in one I think that was the initial goal to make sure the parish was represented, the city was represented, the two professionals are there, in particular where most of these issues are, LUS and Public Works. And then when you look at, well, who makes this fifth appointment and it, it needs to be somebody within the system, well, then the person that crosses both sectors is that mayor president. So um, I, I just wanted to add that. Yeah, but as far fine. as the numbers for the, the one in one, just keep in mind that we're reducing down to five so that one person is there on behalf of the five members. Right. Just like now the three people are there on behalf of the nine members as a recommendation is concerned. I got you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to offer that as an amendment as uh, Councilman Terrio had, and we can just shoot it up or down. So it'll be 3-09 originally as uh, Mr. Terrio's amendment to where number six, the Professional Services Review Committee shall consist of five members one to be appointed by the mayor president two to be appointed by the city council comma and two to be appointed by the parish council period and that's my amendment okay we have a motion by council that's all i have mr chair okay oh i'm sorry go ahead that's it you good sure good. yeah okay I'm all right we got a motion by councilman bellard and we have a second by councilman terrio Council discussion, Ms. Liz. Thank you, Chairman. I just have a quick question because I don't currently sit on that liaison committee. I'm just assuming that a public works director or an LUS director can be present in that meeting in case there are any questions about the contract, right? Can yes. 
Yes. Well, actually, for the record, it's a public meeting, so it, anybody correct. could be present. The media, any employee, any person, any civilian, it's a public advertised meeting. Oh, so as far as attendance is concerned, anybody could be there. Only those appointing members are going to actually have a vote. I mean, there's, there's an opportunity for comment um, in, in, in presentation. Absolutely. I just want to make, I guess the point I'm trying to make is to make sure that, because we are not public, we are not engineers, we are not in charge of LUS, we are council members, which makes us special. But I just want to make sure that the <laughs> special term used loosely, but I, uh, but I want to make sure they can be present to answer those questions and be the expert on those topics in case there are questions. So the answer is yes, they can be there. All right, that's all I had. Thank you. Okay. All right. Not seeing any other council discussion. Is there any public comment in regards to Councilman Bellard's motion and Councilman Terrio? Um, Good evening. I have a question. Why would we want city residents' professional contracts to be approved or recommended by parish council members? If it's a city contract, Shouldn't only the city council's appointee make the recommendations? And I believe, Mayor Robidoux, you hit the nail on the head when you said you can do whatever you want on professional services contracts. And that's exactly why the city of Lafayette needs a mayor. Okay. Next speaker, Lloyd Rochon. Yeah. <clears throat> Lloyd Roshan, uh, I think what you're doing, uh, if this amendment passes, is creating a, a problem. Um, and because w w within the implementation of it, you're going to have city uh, representatives voting on parish matters and parish representatives voting on city matters. Mr. Robido gave you all the uh, solution. The only way to solve this is to have a public services review committee for the city and one for the parish. Very simple. You have city, if you do that, then you have city representatives on the public service review, public services review committee voting on city matters and vice versa for the parish. So uh, that's the only way to solve it, gentlemen. Uh, to, to, to do otherwise, to, to, to do what you all are suggesting now, you're creating problems for those later down the road. Yes, sir. Any other speaker? Councilman Billard. The way it's currently written is one in one, so I'm just changing the numbers. So if there's a problem with it, the way it is on my amendment, then there's going to be a problem with the way it is currently written. I just want to say they did not change it and split it like uh, Mr. Roboto stated, so they'd be voting on both the way it's written. That's all I have. Councilman Boudreau. Mr. Bellord, let, let me, let me um, say this. Um, first of all, Mr. Rocio makes a good point. The, the only thing is, let me remind everyone that on these particular matters, the city of Lafayette is still relevant in the parish, unlike any other municipality in the parish of Lafayette. So that's why it's okay for the city to remain part of any decisions that's being made on behalf of the parish. But, and I guess this is for you, Mr. Bellord, in legal. Um, if, if it's just to satisfy the quote-unquote power base, um, why don't we just eliminate the mayor president's appointment and go with a four-member body rather than five? It's not a, a voting body that requires any form of a quorum and a majority. And um, due to the fact that I have, in fact, been on professional services for a number of years, the, the host of the, of the meeting is taking points. So when, when the votes are cast, they're, they're distributing points, and that's what's forwarded to the mayor. So you don't need an odd number unless I'm missing something because you don't need a majority vote. And if that's the case, and if you go with one member from the city, one member from the parish, the public works director and the utility director, it's then at least balanced at worst. And again, the mayor still has the authority to make a selection. Just wanted to put that out there that'll make the balance issue a little bit more acceptable. Mayor Robidoux. 
I have a question for legal, if, sure. if you could indulge me. Um, right now, public service, I think, is a public meeting, and I think that's the case because there are three council members. And, and it's not a quorum. It's not a quorum. No. So it doesn't matter if there's one or two or it doesn't matter how few. So it's a public. So the fact that it's a public meeting has nothing to do with the number of members on it. Right. 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 So we can have as few as one or two and still be. Yeah. That's good. OK. So my question is, chairs, can we offer an amendment to have two separate? So with Mr. Rochon said, if we can get it right. Or are you going to tell me it's twofold? No. <laughs> I, look, I, I mean, if we're going to, I will attempt to draft whatever you wish. It's your choice on what you want to offer as amendment. We I mean, can, I can't offer nothing can go because to four, I'm the chair. But. We can go, we can leave it as it is. We can go to seven. Just vote it out. Just vote out in the middle. Stay the way it is. I'm good with leaving it there. And then if it fails, it'll stay the original way that it's written. I, I understand, but we spent this much time. I'd like to get it right. And getting it right seems. He has the final say, sir. All right. Jared has the floor. We're done with council discussion. Anybody else want to talk? If not, call a vote on the amendment that Mr. Bellard motion and second by council material. District 4? No. District 5? District 6? No. District 7? No. District 8? No. District 9? Yes. District 1? No. District 2? No. District 3? No. Motion to adopt failed. Okay. Now, as chair, I got a question. We spent all this time, nothing has changed. At some point, could a parish council create their own parish service, professional services? If that council became whole as one, it's a new council, and we say we want only the two parish guys or one parish guy, whatever, representing the parish contracts or whatever is coming our way. You'd have to amend the charter. <laughs> and you'd have to amend it, pass it on the parish side, and then turn around and amend it and pass it on the city side? Hold on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I believe in 703, under the proposed amend, amendment charter, we required a majority vote of the parish council and a majority vote of the city council to amend or repeal the charter. Gotcha. All right. Okay. All right. I'll come back to that another day. All right. Moving along. So now at this point, guide me. We need to take a vote on. Can you? The ordinance as amended, including the amendments that have passed thus far. Right. Right. Yes. This, at and this the point, public we, we're going to go to the public speak. with the ordinance as all amended. Yes, correct. You are correct. I am correct. Yes. All right. With all this talking tonight, I don't know who's correct. <laughs> but we will now move to public comment. So all of you that have been waiting patiently and want a chance to speak, you will get a chance to speak on the ordinance as amended with all of those amendments. We will call your name up. You do have five minutes. First speaker. Roddy Bajeron. Following Mr. Bajeron will be Andrew Abair. I promise to, uh, to keep it short as everybody's bedtime right about now. Uh, so thank you, Council, and I want to thank you for holding town hall meetings. Um, I really think that the, the Council wanted to uh, engage with their constituents during it, and we got a lot of feedback, and I think the Council got a lot of feedback on that. So thank you for that. Um, I'm here to talk about a fundamental issue we have with representation at the City uh, Parish Council. I went to four town hall meetings, Mr. Cox, uh, Ms. Abares, Ms. Cooks, uh, Mr. Lewis's, Mr. Terrio, and Mr. Bellord's. Uh, later on, I hear of this great divide between the city 
and the, uh, the parish constituents. And uh, I don't agree with that sentiment that I hear. The common thread I've seen in all these town hall meetings is that people don't feel like the city parish council represents them. It doesn't matter if they lived in the city or in the parish. All I heard was that people are upset with the representation they're currently getting. It seems like both unincorporated and city residents voice their concern that representation, a, fundam a fundamental role in government, is not working correctly. It's broken, and nothing has been si fixed since 1996 when consolidation went into effect. I was eight years old when the voters decided to consolidate back in 1992. That was 26 years ago. I was a kid back then, a little kid. I have kids of my own now. A generation later, and we still have the same representation and parish issues we had uh, back in 1996. My fear is that in 30 years, my daughter will be in this same spot, giving this same speech and talking about the same issues. The only difference is going to be there's going to be nine different council members up there. I hope my kids stay here in Lafayette Parish and build upon what we've done in our community leaders have been doing, especially our young leaders present here tonight. I feel like without proper representation, that Lafayette Parish as a whole will suffer a huge setback in what we're trying to accomplish here, which is a thriving, livable, industrious, and enjoyable community. I think about the old saying that it takes a village to raise a child. To me, that means building a community that molds our children to become great and to do great things. And it all starts with making sure that our issues in the city and in the parish are addressed so that our community leaders can focus on building great communities and not just fixing them. This isn't a partisan issue. I think Mr. Boudreaux touched on this yesterday on Facebook. This has nothing to do with race, political party, religious beliefs, gender, or even the time of the day. It has to do with addressing a fundamental issue in our consolidated government, and that's representation. Representation for our city, representation for our parish, representation for our present, and representation for our future. I'm frustrated at seeing no change on parish issues since I've been here in Lafayette. It's been 15 years since I've moved to Lafayette. And I can't blame a single person for the issues that we see. I blame the system that I was given and not the one that I asked for or voted on. The system is broken in my opinion. Parish budgets can be fixed. Drains and roadage, I'm sorry, drainage and roads can be fixed. Representation can be fixed. The system we have now can be fixed. To the nine members of the council and everyone living in Lafayette Parish, from Youngsville to Karen Crow, Doucin, Broussard, Scott, Lafayette, and everyone in the incorporated area, I ask one simple question of everyone. If we don't move this ordinance forward tonight and start fixing these issues in 2018, when do we start? Thank you. Andrew A. Bear and he will be followed by Lloyd Roshan. That's it. Good evening. I filled in two blue cards. One is a registered city voter, one is a registered parish voter. I would like to know which one you recognize for me to speak. You, you asking me? Yes, sir. You're going to be recognized as one individual who lives in the city of Lafayette is also a parish resident. So as a parish resident, and I'm going to speak as a parish resident, I get to vote to change the taxing authority of the parish of Lafayette under this home rule charter. Right? All of us do. The entire parish gets to vote on changing the taxing authority of the parish. Who gets to vote on changing the taxing authority 
of the city of Lafayette. Do those city of Lafayette voters get a separate vote? Do they get to vote individually? They talk about representation without taxation. How about voting without taxation? How can people who not live in my community vote to change the governing authority of my city and the taxing authority and the authority of my utility company? In the ordinance it says, a method of counting the votes in the city in the parish. Would y'all please explain that? What is the method of voting? Am I voting as a parish guy who has no city vote? I don't think that's an American. Why should people living in Scott, Karen Crow, Broussard, Dusseau, and Youngsville vote to change the city of Lafayette's governing authority who imposes taxes on only the city of Lafayette? You talk about representation? This is the parish council's districts. And I asked y'all to put the city corporate limits on it because the only town in this map that's consolidated government is the red, which is the city of Lafayette. And I noticed how y'all put the city of Lafayette in only two districts to vote for the parish leadership. Now, since the city of Lafayette is a consolidated city parish government, then shouldn't we have equal representation in all of the districts? as a parish rep, as consolidated government. I think that's, this map is very gerrymandered to take away the voting strength of the parish residents living in the city of Lafayette. I proposed an ordinance, a res, or an option. Five city council members, only elected from the city or from outside the parish. Very simple. Parish issue, everybody votes. City issue, only five council members votes. Period. Now you got taxation with equal representation. You don't have representation without taxation at all. Someone said to me that you're adding, we have a train wreck. If I may quote someone. We're having a train wreck, and now we're just adding an airplane crash to it. Now, I've been trying to follow all the amendments y'all have been proposing, because I like to read this thoroughly and understand it, and I have a lot more questions. And I think a lot of the people out there have a lot more questions, too. So it'd be nice if you table this for like a week or two, and let us digest all of these individual amendments y'all have made. Because it's going to be very difficult for those city people to understand how they're getting their new government back by somebody that doesn't live in their town. That does not make any sense. Please, table this for at least two weeks. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Lloyd Rochon, and he will be followed by Jimmy Duhon. Mr. Robido, Mr. Loldillo, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council, guests. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy, Dr. Martin Luther King, and that's where you all are tonight. I want to make it sure clear that I have no issue with the proposal to deconsolidate city and parish council districts. It may very well be in the best interest of all citizens. However, what causes me great concern is the deceitful manner that this proposal has been brought forth. First of all, can anyone tell me how this proposal will benefit citizens in the unincorporated area of the parish? Anyone. It doesn't benefit them at all. It, 
what you're really doing, you're abandoning them. We continue to talk about the citizens of the city of Lafayette. But I want to remind you that it's not the people who reside in the unincorporated, that it is the people who reside in the unincorporated areas of this parish that makes Lafayette what it is. It's the Timas, the Nunc Jules, the Grandma Moose, and Jolie Blancs, Cajuns, Creoles, Africans, Americans, and all other ethnic persons that gives this parish is joie de vivre, is joy of life. That makes Lafayette what it is, what it is today. But yet, you're abandoning them. You complain and say that the unincorporated area of the parish is going broke. Well, guess what? The city of Lafayette caused this problem by continuously annexing the businesses that were located in the area of influence around the city. You took away that tax base, and now you want to blame them for the mess that you created. Kind of hypocritical, don't you think? Yes, you're abandoning them. Whatever happened to I am my brother's keeper? What happened to decency, honesty, integrity? At the July 10th meeting, we were told that the, dem that the demographer had volunteered to do the maps for the deconsolidation. Then lo and behold, we find out that Mr. Castile and Mr. Boudreau, along with other members of the Professional Services Review Committee, met on July 24th and voted to award a $9,000 contract to geographic planning and demographic services to do the maps. But wait, I thought he had volunteered his services. Apparently we were misled. Additionally, no funds were allocated to pay for these services and the council sitting in session did not authorize the expenditure of any funds for the mapping project and any payment made for these services would be illegal. I also bring to your attention that the notice calling the meeting dated was dated July 23rd, 2018. But it notified it notifies us that a meeting will be held on June 24th. Let me say that again. The notice was dated July 23rd, 23rd, but it notifies us that a meeting will be held on June 24th. It doesn't make sense, gentlemen. That's a full month after the meeting was supposedly held. Whatever happened to honesty, decency, and integrity? On page 35 of this proposal concerning nomination to the Civil Service Board, I was pleased to, to hear this evening that uh, you've corrected this item because you were taking the nomination from Southern University and giving it to LSU. I couldn't understand your reasoning there. You've corrected it. On page 34, section 415C3, it states that no employee of the city parish government shall be eligible for appointment to the Civil Service Board. But Section C7 states the employees of the city parish government shall appoint one member, and it specifies how that appointment will be made, which is correct. These universities that I mentioned previous should have no business nominating anyone to serve on the city's Civil Service Board. I think that the over 1,300 employees of the city of Lafayette deserve re better representation than that. At the very least, the nominating authority from these universities should be taken away from them. Mr. Robido should be given the authority to appoint at least one more member, and the employees should be given the authority to elect two members. And now for the big elephant in the room and that is the Public Works Department and the additional cost of this proposal. In its present configuration, you're giving... Mr. Chair, um, the time has expired. The bail was not set on the timer, so it did not go off at the end of his um, time, okay. but he, it, it, he did uh, utilize his five minutes. Okay, thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Lord. Appreciate it. Would it be possible to speak after everyone else has spoken? Uh, no, sir. That was the five minutes. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. The technical difference. You got it straight now for the next speaker? He did reset it. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Uh, Jimmy Dion. I just want to make a quick comment. I'd uh, attended two of the uh, council meetings or the town hall meetings and uh, talking to people after the uh, events. Most everybody's in agreement that we ought to delay the, uh, the voting of the current charter. Uh, it's just going by too quick. There are probably other areas of the country uh, that have experience sim similar to what we're going through. You can do some research and start finding who those cities are and come up with a better plan than what we're doing right now. It's the plan we're fixing is not going to be fixed overall. And I'd just like to pass on to the council just to take it an advisement that uh, most of the people I've actually conferred with do not want to go forward with this plan and have it put on the ballot in November. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Matt Thibodeau. And he will be followed by Wallace Senegal. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Matthew Thibodeau. This is, this is the first time I'm speaking before the council. It's my second council meeting. Uh, I'm a Parish of Lafayette resident. I'm a Parish of Lafayette taxpayer. I'm a City of Lafayette resident. I'm a City of Lafayette taxpayer. Uh, first, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all that you do for the city. Uh, thank you to everyone who's in this room at almost 9 o'clock at night uh, for coming and participating in this discussion. Um, also, I want to thank all of our media who's here, who's covering this. I think one of the biggest issues that's been dictated through our town hall meetings specifically is the fact that not enough information is being dictated or disseminated factually to the public. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you to AOC for showcasing all of the town hall meetings. I actually watched every town hall meeting from the comfort of my home uh, because they were showcasing it. So thank you guys so much. Um, I think there's two main issues that we're addressing here tonight. Uh, the first one is obviously that our parish is broke. Uh, Mr. Conk, I heard you present a 15 minute PowerPoint presentation, which I think should be showcased to the entire parish of Lafayette. Um, however, we can do that because what you presented was very uh, succinct, it's very educated, and it showcased exactly uh, what we needed to do to possibly fix that issue. And I feel like our parish is broke, and I feel like having a specific council um, to deal with those issues would alleviate that. Um, the, uh, obviously, the other issue and the big uh, elephant in the room is that our city of Lafayette does not have equal representation. Uh, there's a a lot of other politics that have been thrown out. Uh, there's a lot of other misinformation that has been um, crossed through different channels. Um, so I feel like if we can just focus on those two specific issues, I don't feel like there is anyone in this room who would disagree that the other cities, Karen Crow, Broussard, Youngsville, and Scott, who do have their own city councils, who do have their own mayor specifically, we're not going to take that away from them. And I think they would be in complete agreement that Lafayette should have its, its own council as well. Um, a few things um, for the town hall meetings. Thank you guys so much again for showcasing all of the town hall meetings. I do appreciate that. Um, I was a little um, befuddled uh, earlier tonight with uh, Mr. Terrio's comments because I did watch his, uh, his council meeting. Obviously, he's not here before us, which is no problem at all. Um, but he, he addressed a few things, and his main concern that I heard uh, was that there would not be possible equal representation on the parish council specifically. Um, and so I was intrigued because in his council meeting, he actually didn't approach the subject of having seven council members. Um, and in the other point tonight, which I forget because it's my first time up here, um, so I'm a little nervous. Um, but I, I, so I was intrigued by when he was talking to our attorneys, they're not here as well, but I thank them for their service. Uh, they may get paid for what they do, but they do have a hard job at the same time. Um, but they said that what he specifically addressed actually could be done. Um, it could have been done in the town hall meeting that he presented because that was over two weeks ago. Um, but obviously he brought these issues up tonight. And then Mr. Bellard, you actually said in your meeting that you were actually for 
this amendment, however, you would like the seven persons. So um, again, I think everyone here is in agreement with those two specific issues. Again, I'm not a legal scholar by any means. I'm not a lawyer. I actually work in marketing and advertising. It's a completely different end of the spectrum. Um, my last thing again is I am support of fixing the charter um, for the future. I don't want to see other people's uh, families, children, grandchildren have to deal with the same issues that we are. Um, I'll cut it close. Mr. Robo, though, and our council members, those of you who are active um, disseminating factual and educational information through channels like social media, through emails and other different platforms, I commend you and I highlight that. Mr. Robo, it's one of the things I would really like for our city as a whole, our Paris as a whole, to really come together, even if that's some sort of communications team to assist. You've got a great team. I, I know Sidra does an amazing job. There's a lot of different hats we all wear. Something to help. We need more people than this in this room. For as big of an issue, we should be packed outside with people right now. And I understand it's 9 o'clock. We all have different issues and things like that. But our citizens need to know, and so that when it does go before them, they can make an educated decision, whether that's yes or no, whatever that is. Again, thank you all so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. And thank you to the citizens for coming tonight. All right. Next speaker is Wallace Senegal, and he will be followed by Jessica Allen. And we ask that everyone speak into the mic, because if you um, don't speak into the mic, it doesn't come across clearly for the viewers of AOC and our recording devices. Thank you. Yes, good evening again to the mayor, president, and to the council, and to the audience, and all those that's listening. I'm not against progress. Never was, never will be. Because right now we have too many things going off in robotics. Uh, they even got a Tesla car up in space. Some little guy driving it around. So I'm not against pro uh, <laughs> progress. <clears throat> My thing is right now, I was supposed to be an enemy to all of this here, you know? I don't think I'm an enemy to nothing. I think I'm concerned about the district that I live in, the district that I know and appreciate. District three councilman, we did a lot of campaigning for him. We voted for him and we would like to see him stay in his district, in his land, as some people may call it. A perimeter. Why can't we draw a city around, I mean a perimeter around the city, and the city become one, the parish be by themselves. We still have our five councilmen and our Mayor President, like everybody else do. But it seemed like the maps, and I understand the person that y'all got to draw the lines for the map, I don't like him no way, you know, because he know how to gerrymander. And that's one word. I do not like gerrymander, and I know it as segregation. But you can't use that word segregation because, you know, that's a bad word. Mm -hmm. I feel like this here, we should leave the inner city the way it is, the inner city. Sometimes change is not always improvement. Are we going to improve what we're doing? Some may say so. Some may say no. I keep hearing the parish is broke. But when I ride around in the parish, seem like we got a lot of businesses, corporations in the parishes. And I keep hearing they got tax breaks. Maybe if y'all stop giving tax breaks, to the parishes, maybe we, they might not be as broke as they should be. 
Kenneth, Councilman Kenneth Boudreaux, he had some cooperation going there. And uh, what you call it, uh, ter uh, tax? Tiff. Yeah, tax tiff. You know, and I see, seem like everybody's shopping there because every time I ride through there, the parking lots are loaded down. You go to the south of here, the parking lot is loaded down too. So why we keep giving tax breaks and we broke? You know, I say the same thing about the state of Louisiana. We're always having tax breaks, but they're always looking for money. But corporations always get the tax breaks and the little man like my district and the people that I know have to pay for the, pay their way. They need to start paying their own way. Thank you guys. I see my time is getting ready to get shot. Thank you guys for all that y'all do. Thank you, Mr. Senegal. Mr. Councilman Cole. Mr. Senegal, regarding your comments on the tax breaks, those are not granted by this council. That's granted at the state level. And until recently, we had no say so in that process. So property tax exemptions are granted by the state until the last year or so. Only recently have we had an opportunity to have our voice heard. And we rejected two of them. Thank you, Mr. Boudreaux. All right, next speaker, please. Jessica Allen. She will be followed by Andre Bro. Good evening. My name is Jessica Onland. First, I'd like to thank you all for being here and for taking up this vital issue. Um, to be very brief, um, frankly, the city of Lafayette needs the autonomy to deal with issues for the city of Lafayette. As a resident of the city of Lafayette and a homeowner in the city of Lafayette, I've been very disturbed that parish voters outside of the city of Lafayette can vote down taxes that would be taxed only to city property that provides vital services to the city. This is just one of a plethora of problems that's occurred because the city of Lafayette doesn't have the same autonomy and city council that the cities and the rest of the parish have. The other municipalities have city government, have city council, but we don't. And I think we've seen the problems for years and years and years. And in 2009, when there was attempts to deconsolidate, Instead, many of our council members wanted to fix the charter. Well, that's great. I think we should fix the charter. I think that we've waited long enough. Um, the city parish government was consolidated when I was, what, three years old? I now have a three-year-old and another one on the way. So it's now 2018. We're having major issues because we can't get what we need done for our city. It's very vital that this issue move forward quickly and most importantly, did this go to the voters? Thank you. Thanks. Council Material. What things in the city can't be done right now, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I'll tell you that I'll, I can happily follow up with you, but it's 9 o'clock. I'm pregnant, I'm hungry, and I'm tired. <laughs> Yeah. I'll, t I'll tell you that we were very, very disappointed that the library taxes for the city of Lafayette failed due to parish voters that do not live in the city of Lafayette. As one very recent example, but the library is a parish gifts. wide a parish. It's a parish wide tax. It's not just a city tax. So, like I said, I'd be now, happy to follow up with I you. I got you. I just want to state and something. Also, I'd like to throw out: I'm in Mr. Bellard's district, and I sincerely hope that you vote for this ordinance and to move this forward. I just want to follow up, and, and we'll let you go, understanding your condition. Mm -hmm. The city council. Condition? Count, uh, Condition. <laughs> Pregnancy. Thank you, Councilwoman Abair. All right, all right. Let's go. Let's get this thing back in order. Come on. You have, you have five city council members that have a majority of this council. Lafayette always and ha has always controlled its destiny. If anything wanted to move forward in Lafayette, they have and always had since consolidation the five votes to move it forward. And yet I think the maps that we've seen tonight suggest otherwise, and the fact that this is an issue before the council and that there are a large group of people here to support it suggest that we're not where we need to be and that this, the residents of Latvia do not feel that they're getting adequate representation, as has been stated to you again and again and again. So I'll throw my hat in there that I support moving this ordinance forward and sending this issue to the voters. Okay. Go Thank ahead. you. Thank you. All right.
Best of luck with the, the family, the pregnancy, the condition. <laughs> uh, don't go into labor because you're getting stressed out of this meeting, please. We do have police and fire to help you too. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, next speaker. Andre Perot and William Labor will follow. Good evening, members of the council. My name is Andre Bro. I'm a District 7 resident. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening um, and at the town hall meetings that all of you hosted over the past several weeks. Um, I also want to thank the council for the initiative to bring this issue forward. I think there's broad agreement that there are flaws with the Home Rule Charter that need to be fixed to provide more equitable representation for both the City of Lafayette and the Parish of Lafayette. Um, and to better align taxation and representation. And I think the proposal on the table is a viable solution. Um, fundamentally, I think it's a question about self-representation and self-determination. Um, and I think that it's fitting in that spirit that the issue be uh, put on the ballot and brought to the voters. <coughs> so I ask for your support tonight in passing this ordinance, which will bring the issue to the voters and let the voters decide. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Will, William Labor, and he will be followed by Stuart Bro. Oh, somebody lost the watch. Good evening. My name is William Labar. I'm a City Paris resident of District 8. Uh, thank you, Liz, for your service. Thanks to the entire council for all the town halls that you hosted and for bringing this issue. Uh, up for the public to discuss and hopefully to take it to the public for a vote. I think it's incredibly important. Um, most of my, uh, the reasons around this that I support this echo the, the phrase of representation uh, without taxation. I think there's a fundamental flaw in the way that our government is set up right now um, that needs to be addressed. I do not think that we are moving too fast. I do not think anything more urgent can be done than fixing this fundamental flaw uh, in order to help progress and move the city forward and also establish a parish council that has a dedicated focus on parish issues. So I think the, what is being proposed benefits both the city and the parish. Um, so I'm in support. I ask for your support. I want to thank you for the courage of everyone who's brought this issue to the table to provide a fix. I think it's very easy to uh, say no, and it's very hard to come up with creative solutions to problems. It may not be perfect, and that's okay, right? We are trying to create a more perfect government, just like we once created a more perfect union. Um, know that you have a body of people in the city who are supporting you who are, as you put this forward. And I know oftentimes the no voices are sometimes really loud. Know that our voices will get louder in the future and we will be here to support you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who's that? Stuart Bro. You will be followed by Kevin Blanchard. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't on the mic. Stuart Bro, and he will be followed by Kevin Blanchard. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, thank you all for, for allowing us to speak this evening. Thank you for all uh, engaging with us over the, the, the past month and looking at these uh, proposals at the various town hall meetings. Uh, the issue that we're dealing with here is very basic. It's taught in first grade. First graders understand the issue that if you live in an area that uh, I'm, I'm graduated from law school and a first grader could know better than me. Uh, <laughs> that it's a basic tenet of democracy that people within a city should be allowed, they should be the only ones that are voting on an issue. Not people from the parish who have no stake within that city. And I'm speaking like a first grader because I'm a little nervous, but uh, you know, give me some crayons and I'll draw a picture. Um, it's been said tonight that how does this benefit the parish or the unincorporated areas? I still have not heard in one way how it harms the unincorporated parish. We know it benefits the city because it gives city residents a voice. Um, one way that it benefits the city, uh, the unincorporated parish residents, is that at, at the uh, town hall with Councilman Terrio and Councilman Bellard, Councilman Terrio explained that he, in his term of 11 years as a councilman, about 80% of the votes that he took, I believe that number is correct, had to do with the city. So that all those parish representatives, and he represents 91% parish citizens, 
each one of those people has their councilman deal 80% of the time with a uh, with city matters, things that are outside of their jurisdiction. And so I think that the parish would definitely benefit from a body that is actually responsive to the issues in the parish. Um, and, and I don't think that we need to wait and table this matter any longer because this is a matter that's going to be put before the voters in several months. I don't think that there's anyone who cannot make themselves informed to make an informed decision on election day in December and it's your civic duty to go out there and vote in December and it's a congressional election. I don't think it's going to be a low turnout, three, four percent election. So let's get this done. Let's move the city forward and give people a voice. Thank you. Next speaker is Kevin Blanchard. And is Mr. Lawrence Simon still here? Okay. Hi, guys. I was realizing uh, when I came in here that this is the first time I've ever filled out a blue card. <coughs> I've actually been coming to city parish council meetings since before any of you guys were here. And in fact, before the last crew was here, it was back uh, Darren Walter's time when the meetings were over in the parish annex building. This is definitely an upgrade from that. Um, but I've been coming to these meetings and watching folks that are in your positions deal with the charter and, and kind of the position that puts you in for a while now. Uh, I no longer get paid by the hour to be here, so I'm a little tired. Uh, I used to be really excited when meetings would go this long, and then I might get Friday off. Um, you know, you're all having to wear two hats, right? You've got your parish hat and you've got your city hat. Uh, I'm a city of Lafayette resident. I'm a parish of Lafayette resident, right? Uh, Mayor President Joel Robidoux, you know, same thing, two hats. I think the, the important thing to remember is that while you are all doing your best, and I know you are, and you know that I've disagreed with most of you on some level, on some occasion. While you are doing your best, this is not about you. This is about the people of the city who are looking to be able to hold their elected officials accountable. I will use an example, uh, Mr. Terrio. You asked Ms. Alan about, give you an example. I will give you an example. The old federal building downtown has been there for a long time and it is owned by the city of Lafayette and has been since it came from the federal government. There have been successive attempts to put that back into commerce before this council, with previous councils, etc. My friend Jay Castile is usually the person that would help vote those things down. Thank you, Jay, for all of that. And, and look, it's because of his hat, right? Jay is a parish councilman, just like you all are, and he sees his need to provide for a parish courthouse and the federal building is in sort of that realm, right? That's okay, except I can't hold Jay accountable for that vote. I'm a city of Lafayette resident, a city of Lafayette taxpayer that is a city of Lafayette asset. And if we're ever gonna have any movement on that thing and I have to rely on people who I can hold accountable at the ballot box, I have to get all five city people to vote yes. Here's another example, 2013. Two times ago that we tried to do something to amend the charter, right? Which was actually the kind of council and a council idea that someone mentioned earlier today. We had four out of the five mostly city council people vote yes. So my city representation was like, back in 2013, this is not a new thing, was like, we need to do this. And we lost one vote on the city council, on the mostly city council side, and that thing didn't move forward. I spent my time sitting in these benches right here, counting votes. I spent my little weekend that I spent with the city government counting votes. You got to count to five, right? And the way that we're set up right now means that for anybody in the city to be able to say, we are going to do something as a city because we have, believe in it, <clears throat> I have to have a unanimous vote. I gotta have all five people, or I gotta hope that somebody who represents people outside of the city of Lafayette primarily is gonna vote with me, right? 
we have a wonderful opportunity right now, like Mr. Boudreaux said uh, on Facebook a while back, this is not a partisan issue. We've got folks on the parish side of this thing, like my friend Jay, who understand that the parish needs the same sort of representation. That this is the only way that we're gonna get here. I can tell you this though, the problem's not going away. The population shifts, the way that we're all shifting, like growth to the south, this gets on the ballot, that's great. If it passes in December, that's great. If it doesn't, it's not going away. These people aren't going away. Like this is gonna continue to be an issue until we fix it. And so I commend you all for doing your part to fix this issue because it's bigger than any of you individually. This is a big deal for the city of Lafayette. It's a big deal for the parish. Thanks. Eric Crozier, and he will be followed by Mark DeCluet. Good evening, uh, Eric Crozier, Parish Council. Uh, thank you for holding this. I'm a Jay Castile. I'm in your district, so thank you for all of your efforts. Um, as most people that come behind Kevin Blanchard, um, I don't have a whole lot else to say. He stole all the thunder I had, but. I'll tell you, for me, the biggest thing is the accountability issue. Um, I live in the parish. I own property in the city limits. I work in the city limits. I understand both sort of sides of that story. So I drive through on bad roads leaving here, and then I see what's happening in downtown and other parts of the city. But I, I would like the opportunity for someone, to, for you all to be able to focus your efforts on if you're a city council member to focus your efforts on that and then the people in the city can hold you accountable for that the parish i just uh, we as a business owner we wear a lot of hats too and you know you spend a lot of nights trying to figure out what hat you're going to put on the next day so i can imagine you're kind of dealing with a lot of the same things but i would certainly support the amendment i think it's appropriate it's time um, we were talking about this back in college when, when it, whenever the amendment, well, the original consolidation was happening and the ramifications of that. Um, I don't know that we necessarily predicted the shift in populations that's happened, but that's what happens. Things shift, and when things shift, we have to address it. And I think Kevin is probably right. It's not going to go away. And I think the voters ought to get a chance to, to voice their opinion about this. Not that you don't, but I think. I think we should have the opinion, we should be able to vote on this. Just give us the opportunity and then let us decide that. So thank you very much for all your efforts. I know it's difficult, but it's a big topic and thank you very much for bringing it. Thank you, sir. Mark DeCluet and he will be followed by Will Kellner. Uh, Mark DeCluet, um, District 8, Liz, thanks. And thank you all for your service. No closer to the mic. Yeah, thank, thank you all for your service. Um, the past couple of weeks have been really engaging for me. I got to go to quite a number of the town halls, and I really appreciated the, um, the efforts that y'all put out. Um, I think I spoke to just about half of you, not all of you, but after the meetings, and there was a lot of open dialogue, despite our differences, our opinions of the matter. Um, over the past couple of weeks, I've had time to talk with my neighbors, people I work with, about the issue, and there's been some real lively debate, debate that I haven't felt in the community in quite some time. So anyway, I just appreciate the opportunity to, to have this conversation, not only here but in the community, um, I'm uh, I'm in support of the um, of the ordinance. Um, I won't like, ring too many bells that were run earlier. Um, simply, it's um, it's a representation uh, without taxation issue for me. Um, I appreciate Mr. Blanchard for bringing up that point on how it did affect us once in the past. And I'm sure there are other examples. Um, I'm just not knowledgeable enough to point them out. So um, again, thanks for the opportunity. I look forward to hopefully. Um, having more discussion about this over the next couple of months and, uh, and voting for it in the future. Anyway, thanks for your time. Thank you. Will Kellner, and he will be followed by Corley Amlabor. Good evening. All right, now we're, now we're amplified. Uh, thank you all for your service. Thank you for uh, considering this issue, which in my opinion is long overdue for a solution. 
Um, I moved, my wife and I moved back to Lafayette in 2014. I live in the city of Lafayette with my wife. I work in the city of Lafayette. My wife's practice is in the city of Lafayette. I pay city of Lafayette property taxes. The majority of the sales taxes I pay in Lafayette Parish are paid in the city of Lafayette. But tonight, as I stand here, under our current form of government, a resident of Karen Crow or Broussard or Scott or Doucan or Youngsville has the same representation on this city council as I do. That's the issue. And with all due respect to you, Mr. Terrio, the issue isn't, it doesn't become an issue when the parish, when the city loses the majority of the council. The issue is here and it's always been here. And the issue is when any non-resident of the city of Lafayette has a voice in city of Lafayette affairs. That's the issue and that's the disconnect for me. Lafayette is a quintessentially American city. And we've now allowed an un-American form of government to perpetuate for 22 years, where the city of Lafayette residents are denied self-government and given second-class self-government in favor of unincorporated members of the parish and other residents. It's, it's, it's just not American. It is literally why we threw tea in the Boston Harbor. <laughs> so someone who doesn't live here can't say what I can do in my city. This isn't a new idea. I mean, this, was, this is 300 years old. Um, I understand the opposition. I understand it. Some people say we're moving too fast. In my humble opinion, we haven't moved fast enough. We should have never done it 22 years ago. And every day we let it persist, we're in the wrong. And we've passed up chances to make it right. I also understand that this doesn't solve all of our problems. Of course not. We are going to be arguing that government isn't solving our problems until we are no longer. There is no perfect structure for government. If there was, every political subdivision would be governed in the same exact way. But what this does, and you shouldn't change the structure of government willy-nilly to fix one-off policy considerations. You fix the structure of government to empower the people of a place to govern themselves and to give them the tools to address whatever policy problems arise. In that regard, we've handicapped the city of Lafayette, unlike any other municipality in this parish has been handicapped. I also don't think we're abandoning the parish residents. I, I think that's a red herring. To the contrary, I think we're giving them a council focused on their issues. And if Lafayette City is abandoning the parish residents, then Broussard, Youngsville, Scott, Dusan, and Karen Crow turned tail and ran away from the unincorporated parish a long time ago and annex property just like everyone else did. In, in conclusion, I'll simply say, it's time to get this done. We need to put this to the voters. Of course, it's absurd that I, as a City of Lafayette resident, have to spend the next four months begging people in Broussard and Karen Crow and Youngsville to give me the same council that they already have. That's an absurdity, but I think it would be more absurd for this council to deny me and other City of Lafayette residents that chance. Thank you. Carly Amlabor, and she will be followed by Janine. Good evening, y'all. Uh, Carly Amlabor. It's a pleasure to be back here, and uh, I certainly didn't think I would be back here this quickly. So um, it is probably my first time up here speaking as a citizen, and so I appreciate your patience with me. First and foremost, I really want to thank you guys for putting this um, on the council agenda and hopefully on the ballot later this evening. Um, it, took great courage, it takes great courage, and it really is something that I think um, has been a long time coming, and I know many of you have been working on it for the better part of a decade. So to that point, um, I would like to be brief, but I would like to say that, much like someone said, this is the best proposition I've seen on the ballot to fix consolidation, or propose to fix consolidation since the issue has been talked about. It provides the city its autonomy I also think that the flood and other things over the last couple of years have shown us that the parish needs a lot of attention, the whole parish. Um, we have funding issues and we have drainage issues. We have criminal justice issues that I think could be benefited by a council that is able to focus on it. 
Um, and so I would actually, you know, disagree with a couple of the speakers tonight who said that there is nothing in this proposal for the for the parish. I don't think that that's true, and I look forward to talking to a new parish council about how important their roles are. Finally, there was a speaker this evening who suggested that um, that we need to concern be concerned about the district lines, and I would just ask that as you place your vote tonight, um, you realize that this is a decision that takes a lot of courage um, on all of your parts and, and every single one of your districts, if this proposal goes through, changes significantly. We respect the effort that you all went to to get elected. That's not easy to put it out, put out there, put yourself out there. Um, admire each and every one of you for that, um, which makes this vote even bigger of a deal. Um, you guys are all, um, you know, giving yourselves the opportunity to have a much harder time in a couple of years when you have to run for office. So I just want to commend you for that and commend you for thinking beyond yourself. Finally, I think Andre said it, uh, Will said it, several others said it, that uh, taxation has always been linked to representation. That's always what we've been fighting for. And so I want to thank you all. Um, for being here tonight, for listening to all of us, and um, hopefully thank you for your support. All right. Thank you. Janine, and Janine will be followed by Miles Matt. Good evening. This is my first, my name is Janine DeCluitt, and I'm a mother of six. And uh, Liz, I'm in uh, your district, and so I thank you for being a vocal voice for our district. Um, I was also at our last town meeting. It was my first town meeting, and I spoke there. Um, I'm trying to get out of my little shell that I am in. I've had a, a husband for 37 years, and he, um, he was very civically minded. And he did great things in our soccer community. So um, I'm glad to be here this evening. And I'm not going to uh, reiterate what Carly Abar has said or what Will Kellner has said or what Mark DeCluitt Jr. has said, because they said it very eloquently. And I concur with what they say. But what I would like to remind you of is that I'm not looking to kick the can any further down for a few more years. I think we need to address it, and I think we have a great council that can address it. I think you have great backbone, and that's why we voted you in. Um, but I go back to what I know as a mother, and that it would be that when something doesn't work in our household, then we as parents get together, usually in the quietness of our bedroom, and say, how are we going to fix this? Or we go for a walk down Rose Lawn. Mark and I would always say Rose Lawn was our therapy. And we'd come back home and we had a different vision. And then we'd speak it to our children. And whether they got it or not, we were the parents. And so they followed suit. And we have strong children, I think, because of that. So um, when if I look at that and I say that could mirror our community, that's why we're all here tonight. And I do disagree with some people. I, I think that we had a full house tonight. I was sitting on the back row. So I think we do have a lot of citizens who are very, very concerned. And I think we can, uh, like one of the younger gentlemen said, that we can really get the message out with social media. And of course, the younger generation can teach us exactly how to do that. Um, I would like to end with saying that um, because this was my first meeting, I'm not a real big sugar person, but I went into my mother-in-law's candy jar that I've um, inherited before I came here, and I said, I'm going to get two pieces of chocolate, and I'm going to eat them on Johnson Street coming to the meeting and just kind of think about what I want to say. And I love these Dove chocolates because they taste so good. But they also have a great message. And so when I ate my first one in front of UL, I said, no way. So the message with our Dove's chocolate tonight was, keep life moving forward. Looking backward is only for time travelers. I said, OK, I'm going to go with my second chocolate. I'll eat the second one. So I ate the second one, and then I looked at it. And I just said to myself, shut up. And it says, 
inhale the future and exhale the past. Thank you for your time. Next speaker. Miles, Matt, and he will be followed by Anita Begna. Sure, I love Janine. She comes from a great family. My name is Miles Mott. I'm in Miss A. Barris District. Um, I'm a local attorney here in town. I live on the south side. I work and own a business and some property downtown. I have been and am serving on some of the downtown boards. Um, <clears throat> I liken this to it. Sometimes I get in front of a jury, and one of the stories I tell is that, you know, saying no is the easiest thing in the world because you don't have to think to say no.